All right, in these next couple of videos, I want to show you just some additional tools that you have at your disposal when laying out your scene and moving your models around. So the first group of them are going to be right over here. This is our actions bar. So we've talked about our scene editor up here and our properties panel down here. Sandwich right in the middle of them is this very thin action bar. Now, this is pretty cool. So the thing I like about this is that, you know, there are hot keys to all these, but but there are additional, you know, you can you can additionally interact with them here. There are some basic ones. Uh, you know, there's obviously delete, which is the trash can. So if I want to delete a model, I can do that. There's this random map floating around in here. I can delete that. Uh, there's also a duplicate. So if I want to duplicate the model, I can just click that. And now I've got a couple of them. I can do that one more time. Additionally, there is a folder here that allows me to shift select these up here and then I can click group and now they all live inside of one group. Again, we talked about that parent child relationship. So now if I want to move these all around as one collective unit, I can do that. And then there's uh, one that I use quite often and that is this uh, move to ground tool. So one of the biggest problems that we had in animated films was constantly worried about whether an animated character was going to be on the ground or if they're floating and da 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 da. It was really hard to see sometimes. So one of the things that's nice is like, you know, let's say you're moving this around and you've kind of got this all over the place and you're like, okay, I don't, I don't really know if it's floating back there. You can just select the object and then say, boop, move to ground. And it always is going to slap it down onto the ground plane, which is really, really nice. Outside of just that actions panel, I did want to draw attention to something else. So again, this meat map character has three components, the head, the body, and the base. When I'm selecting inside the scene, I'm selecting the individual components. If I wanted to select the entirety of it, all I have to do is, well, I can either select up here, which is what I most often do, but you can also go into this small um, selection window. And if I just hold down the left mouse button, this pops up. And what this is, is uh, I can choose between whether or not I have a uh, group select or individual select on. So group select now, if I activate that, now whenever I select one of these, I'm selecting the entire thing. I'm selecting the parent, not the individual children. But for me, like I said, I, I generally like to have the individual uh, selection mode on so that I can select each individual component. And if I need to grab the parent, I'll just do that from the scene editor over here. One other thing to draw attention to when positioning this object around the space is that you want to uh, be aware of which mode you're moving it around in. There's two different types. There is local space and world space. Local space is a site. So if I've got this character and I'm moving it here and I start rotating it and repositioning it here, you will see that every time that this widget is there, the up, down, left, you know, the X, Y, Z coordinates are, are parented, are like they move along with it. Now, if I say I wanted to rotate this object here, but I'd still wanted to move it straight up in the space, all I would have to do is change the orientation from local space to world space. And I do that, or I guess it's object space to world space is I can select it up here. So uh, there's this little button that allows me to toggle back and forth between the two, to object space or world space. So now if I'm in world space mode, I can go straight up and down, straight back and forth. And it doesn't really matter how I rotate this. Whenever I go back, it'll always be straight up and down. So just an option there. You can also toggle that on and off inside of this window here. Uh, yeah, right here inside of the transformation space. Okay. So let's move these back to the origin. And I did want to show you one more thing from the action bar over here to the side. So again, we'll just go ahead to leak two and three um, because I want to show you this. So when I have one of these objects selected, I've got those four options. As I uh, duplicate a couple of them and I select multiple, all of a sudden this new little guy pops up. This is aligned and distributed. This is, I, this is one of those, the first time I used it, I didn't know it was here for a long time, but the first time I used it, I'd never seen it in another 3D application. It's very cool. So you select that and you get this interface. Basically what it allows you to do is to move these objects and distribute them evenly over a certain, a given space. So again, you can um, move them around and you can, it, it's really nice for like product shots. So you know that everything is equally spaced. Before I used to have to kind of do that numerically and it was a pain in the butt. Um, 
And so this is really nice. So you have multiple objects selected, this little graph looking thing will pop up and you can interact with those that way. The last thing I wanna draw attention to is when you have a parametric model in here. So I've got this uh, cone, which is, you know, obviously, you know, parametric. I can um, change this however I want. Um, what I also get is this additional button that allows me to convert it to a standard object. So there are some times, and this will pop up uh, occasionally, occasionally people will get this notification that like you'll, you, you'll see me later in a future video, I drag and drop some images onto a object and that'll allow me to place a decal. You can only do that on standard models, not parametric models. So what that means is if you just click this, it will convert this model from having all those parameters and just kind of freezes all of that into one final thing. Not a big deal, but just something to be aware of as you move forward. All right, so that is kind of phase one of, of um, being able to position and distribute these models around your scene. In the next video, I'm gonna show you one of my like top five favorite things about Stager and that's that collision tool.